and pews to Huntington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. A sermon before she left so that the deacons could read it. I'm Terry Johnston. I'm joined today by Gail Shonagal and Dan Oliva. So let's get started with our service. Let's take a moment to close our eyes, breathe deeply, and sit in silence. Thank you. 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, and a time and matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones away and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate a time for war, and a time for peace. Good morning. This was written by Reverend Lucille as well. When we open our eyes in the morning, what's one of the first things, if not the very first thing we look for? The clock. Okay. When we wake up, we look at our alarm clock or at our cell phone. The first thing we, which is usually on our mind is what time is it? How many times a day do we check our watches or our cell phones for the time? We certainly don't want to be late for an appointment or miss our flight. When is our favorite TV show on? Is it the time we take our meds? What time are our guests arriving? In many ways, we are ruled by time. Time to work, time to rest, time to eat, and a time for that meeting. This is not just a modern phenomenon. Some of the most monumental mythologic structures of the world, such as Stonehenge, were at least part of the measure to measure time. Look at the size of Big Ben in London. The old saying, time waits for no one, is the hard truth. Time is one thing we cannot control in any shape or form. We cannot stop it. We cannot alter it. It is the persistent passing of our life. The writer of Ecclesiastes knew how important time was to humans. The writer knew also that the passing time included positive and negative, pleasure and pain, joy and sorrow. All humans go through these experiences in our own individual ways. We have known people who have loved us and people who really didn't. We had the joy of a bright summer's morning and the quiet of a dark winter's night. We have known health, we have known hurt, both physically and emotionally. The passage of time brings new adventures and new challenges. Even Jesus Christ, God's incarnate, did not escape the passage of time and all that it entails. And it was at the point God, who is above and beyond all time, put God's self-fragile flesh into to learn the limitations of being human. Jesus knew what it was like to age. He knew laughter. He knew tears. He knew what it was like to enjoy good times with friends and family. He knew what it was like to be betrayed. He knew what it was like to see his life marching towards death. In Jesus' experience in the human time, God could be complete sympathy, empathy, solidarity, and with the creators of creatures in carrying God's face. Our God knows the positive and the negative, pleasure and pain, joys and sorrow of our human experience, and walks us through them all. As we travel through time of our lives, we are not alone. We do not face loss, aging, pandemic, <coughs> Death by ourselves. God loves carries us when we cannot carry ourselves. 
offering us strength, hope, and peace. For everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven. In all our seasons, in all our time, in life and in death, and beyond death, God's compassionate presence is with us all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come, let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us thank God for all the good things in our lives. Oh God, thank you for the blessings of life, for trying to live, love, and share, and for all the good gifts you have given us. Help us to always be thankful for the joy you bring us. Let us pray for those who need comfort and healing. Oh God, may your comfort and healing be upon all those in need, in body, mind, heart, or spirit. Let us pray for our world. Oh God, our world is full of hurt. May peace, justice, and love rule in all our parts so that our world will become a better place. Let us pray for our church and for ourselves. Oh God, may we always love you and each other with a real love so that all may see Christ in us. For all the prayers of our lips, our minds, and our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God gives us many gifts to use to make our lives and our lives and of our world better. We appreciate all your generosity and faithfulness to our church and ask that you continue to support our ministry in Christ's name. Thank you, all God, O oh God, for all the good gifts you have given us. Please accept all our gifts to you. May be, they be symbols to our faith and love. May you bless them to your use in this world. Amen.